Welcome to The Spirit of Business, episode number 62, Business in a New Paradigm, with Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Matt. I have a question. Somebody sent me an email the other day and copied it to you, and she was saying kudos to you for the podcast that we're doing together. And she made this little comment that has made me think a lot. Uh, it like comes back to me every single day and she said she's a former accountant and she's now working in what she termed conscious business I think and she said that it's been really hard for her at times to shift the paradigm from the traditional and technical way that an accountant works to this different way of thinking which we describe as conscious business whatever that means and I think it could be quite vague even what it means and it made me really think about you and the fact that your career you started in the tax office which is about as accountant as you could possibly possibly get <laughs> you've had to do years and years of tax and compliance and all the stuff that accountants have to do and yes you're a brilliant business mentor so you've got this other thing you're not like what we all think of as an accountant you're a completely different being from that but still at the heart of your business you always have to take care of all that stuff because if you don't you could be in really big trouble and it so it just made me realize that in terms of thinking about business and looking at business and we often talk in this podcast about the difference in the way that I think about things because I'm not very good at putting bringing things down to numbers for example which accountants do all the time I started to think well what's it like for you being you, um, kind of grappling with and working with the way that I work, for example, and people perhaps more like me, um, because that might not be very easy. So I was very curious to get your insight. Wow, you're actually asking me what goes on in my brain, which is a scary place a lot of the time, because it's, it's, it's a pretty crazy place in there in terms of and it's probably a good conversation topic to discuss because there were so many things that came up then when you were talking. First and foremost is what is a conscious business for me? I'm going, what's the difference between what I do and a conscious business? So the good definition from that point of view, the fact that you've, you've quite rightly called me an accountant and labeled me as an accountant because that's my tool of trade. That's what I'm educated in doing. And then from there, I'm thinking, um, but I don't really call myself an accountant. I would classify myself as a business owner. Okay, so I'm, I sort of see myself as a business owner, not necessarily as an accountant, although I am an accountant at the end of the day and it is my tool of trade and it's what I do and it's what I sell and it's what I practice in. And so all these, so many thoughts came up when you were talking then worth exploring because really what you're talking about there is saying, well, well how do you operate in this world when you're dealing with people that might not necessarily be in the same world as you. And I think that's really what you're talking about there because this person that's wrote the email said to you, hey, I was an accountant and now I'm a conscious business owner. Okay, well, um, that's interesting that you're labeling accountant as one thing and therefore this it, it puts it in a box. What's in that box? Okay, that's in conflict potentially with what's in the conscious business box. Maybe that they're not in conflict. Maybe there's some sort of connecting point there in between and and i'm starting to think about that in terms of my life and i do often feel very conflicted around um the traditions and the knowledge that i have and the experience and what i've been taught and the uh, the traditionality of it compared to a, a modern world and a modern way of thinking and an evolution now the world evolves all the time so we have to evolve and accounts have had to evolve over the years going from, you know, paper-based to abacuses to, you know, <laughs> to, to calculators to all that sort of type thing and to spreadsheets and then really moving into the more of the advisory sort of aspect of it. So there's been an evolution in our industry like there has to have been in everything. And so lots of lots of things to talk about really in terms of this particular topic. And But first and foremost, I think that where I've, the first thing to talk about is this concept of definition. Well, what are you really talking about when you're thinking about being an accountant and then being a conscious business owner, for example? Like, 
what is that and and why should those things be in conflict or why do you see those things in conflict yeah i think it's a really good question and even as i said the word conscious business i was questioning for myself what does that really mean it's become a sort of shortcut for something and and i would start by saying that i think that there are probably some areas where there appears to be a conflict most of it is a question of they can sit alongside each other or one's included in the other and the other you know they can go both ways but i having worked a lot with healing i know that there are times like healing comes works in a different paradigm from medicine from being a doctor now there's a lot of overlap because you could say well in some areas of healing or natural health people prescribe natural medicines instead of synthetic medicines they do diagnoses and they may come out with a homeopathic diagnosis rather than a medical diagnosis but they use the same kind of tools to come out with a different answer but there are also areas where the, they're like different languages that don't really speak that they don't speak the same language and traditionally in those in in that field we've talked about holistic um a linear a, a medical model is more linear it will look at a single organ for example in isolation from the other organs um whereas most of the natural systems will look in a holistic way at how all the organs work together those two things that they don't sit next to each other you come out with a radically different approach depending on which way you go and i use that example because it's a very everyday example that is quite relatable and i think that the paradigms in business what we're beginning to do in business now is say how can we look at business in a genuinely holistic integrated way when our business structures even don't require us to do that so a a private limited company which there's some form of in probably most countries or for most people who are listening to this podcast um it it's a profit making company there's no requirement within the structure of the company that you look holistically at the impact of that company there's no requirement that you um treat people in a particular way as as long as you adhere to the law or that you look at the wider impact of what you're doing on the environment or communities or any of those other things now those are some aspects that have been brought up in inter- we've got b corps that make you do those kinds of things so social responsibility a more holistic way of looking at things where for example employees like in many companies not in yours um employees can i think feel very much like cogs in a machine and we know that and we use that expression and we use it because people really do have that experience and business so so i think that the when people talk about conscious business they're talking about um a business that has a purpose that is bigger um than um, <laughs> it 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 goes beyond the activities of the business they're looking at the wider impact of the business and that that would definitely be a part of it not only the um, direct impact of the business um that would be one very important part of it and i think at least if we can start with the word holistic um that begins to give us some area of the territory of conscious business that there is a holistic approach and therefore all the different parts are seen are seen as a functioning whole now to me in a way that's just a human way of doing business it's so obvious that all the parts are part of a whole and a business is a part of a community and it's part of a world but it's not obvious to many people in business because they don't actually think about those things and we know that they don't and we see the consequences of it so i think that's where the contrast lies it's not actually about you and me and you personally but it is about there is there are ways of thinking that for example um you probably see in many of the business owners who you work with that are more traditional and are more linear and that and and linear is not the same as holistic that uh, linear I, i would see it say that linear is a part of holistic 
uh, that holistic contains linear within it, but a, but a holistic way is a more expanded um, way of doing things. And probably the reason why you and I get on with each other is because you're pretty holistic. It's interesting some of the things you spoke about then around business and being holistic. Um, I, I think there's some fantastic examples and great examples in small, medium and large business which do demonstrate this holistic approach to, to business. And to say that that we don't is probably not necessarily 100% true. I think that it's not, it, it's not the majority across all businesses in the world, but there's obviously a, an evolution and, you know, it started years ago when they talked about triple bottom line in terms of, you know, the social responsible impact and the economic impact and the also the environmental impact. So there is, we, we've been talking about these things even in our accounting world for a number of years now. And, and, and there is an evolution again of that, of, of a different terminology around talking about impact in a greater sense rather than just a profit and an economic impact okay so i think that there is an evolution how many businesses would you say that you come across um really look at the triple bottom line for example i on a proprietary I, I mostly deal with small to medium sized enterprise okay so yeah. i'm not in a large enterprise space so my experience is more at the business owner level typically and I would say that the business owner level, there is, I, I'm really pleased to report that the, the majority of businesses that I work with have a, an experience and a desire to look at the complete impact of their organisations. Now, desire and implementation sometimes can be two totally different things. And I see that the, the, the people are trying to do the right thing within their limited capability and probably financial elements of it as well. I certainly think that that they think about the team a lot, so about the people impact, about the social responsibility impact inside their organisations. I think that they're thinking about it from a, a product perspective, but not beyond, they're not probably thinking about environmental and, and beyond that, really. They're, they're more probably in the main thinking about their own world and the people that are impacted upon their own world that is probably my point, probably not beyond that, if that makes any sense in what I'm talking about. So I do see a movement. I do see an evolution. I do see the types of people that I work with. Now, we know that like I'll track likes. Uh, and so therefore, I probably are dealing with people that are similar in terms of the way that they think as I do. But I don't look after, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of businesses that operate in this country or around the world and the millions that operate around the world. So there is an evolution. That's the first thing that I wanted to, to talk about. And it's like saying, well, what, how far does that actually go? And, and I also think it's worth saying, well, the natural conflict, and maybe this is where the accountant thing comes in, is accountancy in organisations are known for cost control. Okay, so when you've got an accountant, in your, like a CFO or a finance director in your organisation, Typically, everybody whinges about them, okay? And why they're whinging about them is because of the fact that they're picking them up on, you know, their costs and, and what they're spending money on. And, and so uh, that's their tradition. That's kind of the traditional way of accounts being thought of in an organisation. And so that's probably, there's a negative element to that because, you know, you, you, you're telling me that you're picking me up on how much I can spend or you're limiting how much I can ex I expend or you, you're trying to... to um, get me to say, well, if I spend this money, this is how much money I'm going to make out of it. So everything is very money orientated. It's very cost control orientated. And so I think that's where the, the if you're talking about so holisticness, you're talking about having to think about investment. Okay. And you're also, the other thing that I want to talk about now before I lose a thought is that I've spoken and I've dealt with a lot of businesses that are in the creative space and historically would have been in the space of say graphic design or advertising or um, architecture. So something where there's a very high level of creativity and design element involved in it. And the, dif the difficulty that I had when I was managing these businesses is very much around, you know, saying, well, okay, 
you're losing money on these particular types of clients on these particular types of jobs so you've got to spend less time on doing the design of that because you're spending too much of your time and you're actually spending your, your costs are too high compared to you know the, the revenue that's coming through so you, you're making a loss we need to think about a way in making a profit and they said yeah yeah but i'm not going to compromise on the outcome if it's not beautiful if it doesn't look good at the end of it whether that's a, a logo or whether that's a building I'm not going to actually put my name to it. I'm going, yeah, that's great, <laughs> but I've got to find a way to actually marry the creativity, the creativity with making money. Okay, so that's another element to it. So there's that creativity bit, there's the cost control bit, and it's like, and they're all, and this is where the conflict starts to rise in, and that's why accounts maybe seem to be linear. And then you've got the creativity and the wholeness that sits over here that needs investment for these things to actually work. And that is such a beautiful example, actually, I think, because there are so many different ways you could look at it. And I'm not sure that we would necessarily know even which is correct, because my mind goes to I, my senses. I don't know if I can say I know this, that sometimes if I put too much effort into something that's smaller, but I do it really well, it enables me to do something bigger later that perhaps would be profitable. But can we prove that? Probably not, probably never. Um, so, so is it right to look at it in the way that this is costing too much and not making profit? Yes, clearly that's correct in a way. Is it right to look at it, but maybe I'm gaining some experience here that's so valuable it's going to allow me to make profit in the future? Yes, that could be right. Um, clearly, if, if in the former case, the business goes out of business, I don't get the chance to do that beautiful thing in the future. So we have to watch out for that. But I think that that's a perfect example where we don't really know because there are so many things. A business has so many moving parts over not only what's happening at the moment, but what's happening over time. And, and this is what makes me realize that it, when we have that sense of a business as a living kind of, it's like, it's almost like an organism. It's, it's, it's a thing that's alive and there are things happening that we don't understand and there are forces and energies at play all the time. There's a comment that an employee makes somewhere that leads to something in a year's time that you had no idea about. That's happening all the time. And so what is it that we're playing with that we're trying to pack into a structure that will fit into a set of accounts at the end or that you know you you can say to me oh show me the profit and loss and the balance sheet and i can see what's going on um what like the thing that we're trying to pack is is so rich and diverse and i understand we have to have rules and um principles and laws and things like that and we say this is business and this is not business and but i, I think that shows why it's such a um, it's an interesting topic and such a challenging topic, actually. It is. And going back to that other point about accountants that seem to be cost control, okay, that's a fundamentally to what they're there to do is to report on, you know, the, the, the revenue, the expenses and the profit of an organisation or the loss of it, depending on where they're at. And so if their responsibility is around managing finances and about managing the, the money that comes in and goes out and having enough money to pay payroll the next month, for example, and therefore it's all about cash control really at the end of the day, then they're going to be always thinking about, it's like, you know, a surgeon will always think about, a, you know, solving a problem with a knife, you know, an accountant's always going to solve a problem with cash and money really at the end of the day. And so... We have to be really conscious of that. And that's what you're really starting to, that email maybe started to light you up in terms of thinking, well, actually accounts have to think this particular way because they're responsible for it. You know, because if, if the business goes goes bust, then the, 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 you know, the finger's gonna be pointed, you know, largely at obviously the, the CEO and the, the owners of the business, but really the account's gonna be right up there as somebody that's, that, that is, responsible for the the future of the business and so what I, of it, probably right. what I can see is that a truly conscious business the actual technically correct definition of a conscious business is not on one or other side of that um, polarity is actually a mm. business that marries 
financial responsibility with creative responsibility or with you know productive whatever the whatever the other part of it is that marries them to create something that is both profitable and responsible and creative so it marries the wider responsibility the bigger purpose with the money with the creativity that is innate in any business there's always going to be some degree of creativity and maybe there are some other things that's what a truly conscious business is it, it brings those all together which means we all have to listen to each other and understand each other's perspectives and find a way to solve the problems so not limit the creativity and not not destroy the finances but make the finances work so that they actually increase the creativity to me that's consciousness and i think Which the dichotomy exists where people are just not doing really good business because they're not willing to think it out. So they say, the, the accountant says, you can't do that. The CEO goes off swearing at the accountant. I'm speaking of an example I can think of. <laughs> the accountant is destroying, or is the CFO, destroying the spirit of the business because all he's doing is counting numbers and doesn't see that this person actually contributes to the happiness of the clients and they shouldn't be cut as because they're an unnecessary cost. They're an essential to the experience the business is delivering. The accountant is not seeing that. But both of them are not communicating with each other because the CEO has gone storming off and doesn't even want to listen to this guy who thinks is completely not, you know, and the, and the accountant is storming off in the other direction. Let the CEO never listens to me and he's totally irresponsible. And so it's a lack of communication that creates this perception of um, the different paradigms. Um, I think, you know, as we open up to a more purpose driven economy, that's not that it's just it's kind of driven in a different way. We're not going to be able to abandon the financial aspect of it. We need to use it even better and more wisely than we have before. What you spoke about then reminds me of the the large differences between a larger business and a small business. A, a larger business has typically what we call a C-suite. You know, you have your, your chief financial officer, you know, chief HR, chief sales and marketing. You have all these chiefs that sit underneath the, the, the chief executive officer, the CEO. <laughs> chief. And so the, the, the point there is that you have these heads of responsibility. So you have the, the account that's going to talk about numbers and financial responsibility. You've got the, the HR, you know, head of HR is going to be talking about people and culture and making sure that, you know, the, there's, there's a social responsibility around that. You have sales and marketing that's going to be responsible for, you know, obviously the aspect of selling, okay, the products and services or marketing from that point of view, and it goes on and on. And then, you know, what was, if we're talking about a holistic business, you've got to make sure you're adding the extra bits, <laughs> to those because they're, they're just as important all the things we spoke about you got to have the numbers and you got to have the people and you got to have the products and, and so in a small business the business owner is typically wearing a lot of those hats okay and then employing people to support them in that but they're largely you know having these conversations but a lot of the time they're having the conversations in their own head rather than with each with other people so they, they and this is the thing about why I called myself a business owner before is because yes, I do have a C-suite by the way, but I still have all these conversations in my head and a lot of them are in conflict. Some Conflict is probably the wrong word, but it's they're, they're, they're constantly talking to each other about saying, okay, we have this thing happening over here on the numbers. We need to make money and profit. We've got, we've got to be, you know, we've got to make sure that our, our products are responsible and ethical and, all those sorts of things and then, then our people and our culture has to be the best so you're constantly trying to juggle all of that to have a sustainable business and i think that the business owners that i know are typically trying to do most of that um, and having people support them to do that and expertise to do that but it, it's hard it's really 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 hard um, not only at the small business level but also the large business but that you can see the structures and the conversations are very similar. Yes, uh, it's actually very hard when you see that those roles are quite different 
to have all the conversations in your in your own head. That's very hard, isn't it? To try to represent those different roles, and and each person is probably going to favour one over another. And we see in very large business that very often money wins out over everything else, and profit can be at a great deal of cost. Um, not cost as in the accountant um, is thinking about. The accountant might be happy because the business is very profitable, but the cost is beyond the the kind of frame of the business itself. It's a cost to the environment and communities. And we hear a lot about that, so we don't need to talk about that here. But I think to um, f for us to be able to look at, for example, if, if one has more of a financial brain, to look at the people not just as a cost, that the way of looking at people is different from the way that you look at the numbers. And the way you look at sales and marketing, so let's say marketing on its own, is especially about communication, is different from how you look at people or how you look at numbers. And so we need to have these different forms, different kind of capabilities and that it's a constellation of skills that it takes. And it's not just skills, it's, it's mindsets. It's, it's a way of thinking about things. It's no wonder we, I use the word holistic because you need to have an incredible agility and flexibility to think about all of those things. And it goes back to what you were saying before about what your preference is. So I see businesses, especially in that C-suite where the CEO might have come up through the ranks of being the CFO, being the accountant, right? Some come up through the ranks of being the sales and marketing and the other one might be the product technical person that comes through the ranks as well or HR. But they typically will come up through the ranks based on their own vertical, okay, or their own discipline. And so therefore organisations then take on that personality typically because of where they've come from. Now, as much as I'm an accountant, I would say that I'm a people-led CEO as opposed to a, an accountant or numbers-led CEO. So I think about people probably more than I do most other things. And so then I will always be thinking about people first and then money and profit and all that sort of stuff second, okay? Whereas other people might be thinking profit and money first, people second, okay? Now, somebody else might come along and go, I'm thinking about social environmental impact first, okay, which is kind of in this probably new paradigm that you're talking about in terms of the conscious business, the holistic part of it, about the impact that the organisations are having. And so therefore the culture of that business will be completely different to yes. the other two. And I think that that's really important to, to make the distinction on the note of because I see this every day that, that what are you led as in terms of, I, I would say I'm a people-led CEO where I think about people first and not just people, our own in team people, I'm thinking about the client experience. So I'm always thinking about how are we helping people? How are we supporting business owners? How are we helping them achieve their goals and aspirations, which is our purpose of our organization? How do I allow my team to create a space for them where they grow and develop professionally and, be, and achieve their goals and aspirations? So that's, for me, that's the actual, but I'm not necessarily thinking at probably at a high level that you're talking about, which is that that impact upon environmental or social, I'm still thinking about my own world in terms of that. So I actually think that that wider impact, everyone should be thinking about that and mm -hmm. through their own lens. I don't think that you could have an organisation that is only led by that. I suspect that everyone needs to come through one of those lens. Like if I, if I am ever in a position of being CEO with a C-suite, um, I would definitely be on the product development side. You know, what I think about all the time, and I think about it in terms of making a better experience for people, and I think about it in terms of the difference it's going to make to the world, but definitely my lens is always through the creating of the, of the product. So when I listen to you and I'm thinking, well, if I'm creating products, I must think about the impact that product has beyond just the clients who sign up for courses. But if I'm doing the numbers, I have to think about the impact of the decisions we make beyond just the profit that we make and the, and the costs that we have to balance. And if, I'm, if it's about the people, I have to think about the health and well-being of the people beyond will their backs last long enough for them to sit in the chairs all day long so that they can sit at their computers. 
Um, I heard an example the other day of somebody who worked for a very, very large company who wanted her, discovered her her team, many of them had back problems and wanted to get some kind of the right chairs for them and was told by um, the executive team that she couldn't and she said, well, you can take it out of the bonuses if it doesn't work, out of our bonuses if it doesn't work because um, I'm going to do it anyway. And she did it and, of course, saved a lot of sick leave and all the things that we know happens. But health and well-being is not just about making sure people can do that thing you need them to be able to do. It has to be, it has to be about the wider health and well-being. Not that we're responsible for people's health and well-being. They are. But perhaps to create an environment where they can actually take responsibility for it rather than kind of be forced into situations that are very uncomfortable. So I think the purpose part belongs in every sector of the business because it's an expression and, and it belongs in every you know member of a family. You can't say, well, mum will take on that bit and everyone else, everyone else can trash the place and mum's going to clean up all the time, which is actually what happens in many families, I think. But that's not breeding kind of social and environmental responsibility. It's breeding what we're trying to move away from now. Yeah, it is. And I think about it saying, I th uh, as we said before, my experience is a lot of people are trying to the, to the level of their capability and the best of their capability as it stands today with the resources that they have. Um, some, you know, aren't thinking about it at all. There's some that are in the category of thinking about it that probably don't know how to do it. <laughs> or don't have the resources or the capability. And there's some that are actually great experiences where they are doing it. They've got the thought and they are doing it. So there's probably the three categories like there is in, in most things. And I do see conscious business owners daily trying to get better at this stuff. But, you know, there's, there's still a lot to do. And that's probably what you're talking about. We're, we're sort of, and there's so much, uh so many views like you know when you spoke about the woman before with the, just the backs and you said the executive team you're probably kind of saying the accountants are saying they couldn't actually probably <laughs> yes, couldn't but we're not gonna, that's an expense an unnecessary expense you know <laughs> that's right and and that's conflict because if i'm a people-led so in that situation if i'm a people-led CEO, i probably would have done the same thing so just take it out of you know I don't care. You take it out of my bonus, take it out of whatever it actually is, just because I care about the people that are in the organisation. And I know that if they're feeling good about the world, then typically our clients are having better experiences and they're having better experiences in themselves. So there is just so much to think about constantly and so much conflict. And if you don't have the resources, as we said before, as a business owner, this is all going in in your own head and you've only got so much capacity to actually implement that from a from a responsibility perspective i think perhaps that the thing that is dawning on me as being particularly um important and it, it's one of those things that occurs to me time and time and time again or i recognize more and more deeply is that um, if you look at it from a purely business perspective it's, it takes a lot of resources but if you look mm. at it first and foremost from a human and personal perspective it, it does also take time to treat people well, but why would you ever not want to treat people well, for example? It takes time to listen to your accountant and actually get your accounts to work rather than be blind to what they're saying and not listen and then maybe go out of business, which is a very painful consequence. So it takes time, but that is time that we need to take. Um, and there's an expression I've heard recently, um, somebody talks about slowing down to the speed of consciousness. And I started to understand what he means. It's like actually doing things at a speed where you can create this kind of holistic result, where you can actually take account of all the things that need to be taken account of. You're not rushing so fast that you don't have time or energy for the things that are actually important. And I think if we do that, in our family life and also in our business life. We start with ourselves, we start to create an environment where that's the norm, that we take care of each other, that we think about 
the wider impact of what we're doing simply because it's the right thing to do and because human beings are naturally geared to do that. And we're forgetting who we are when we get into that hurry and we don't do it and, you know, and we mess up in the way that we do. So this is about becoming more human, more alive, more relaxed in a way, slowing down a bit those things that are in a hurry and also speeding up the things where there's so much um, procrastination. I mean, things move so slowly in business, almost to match the ridiculous speed that people are trying to move at. So I think if we could come back to ourselves be more present, we've talked many times in the podcast about being present, then um, we start to be able to do these things in a simple way, which is just starting with me and you being a human being, listening to ourselves and to each other, doing the things that are naturally good human beings do. And being open to other people's thoughts and wishes and concerns and, and trying to marry all the things together. And that's and, and if you've got a team of people that are open rather than closed in their thinking, that makes life so much more easier to navigate through this difficulty yeah. of, of marrying it all together. And we need to learn how to communicate with and enrol and engage people who's, who are more closed because they are part, a large part of the population. And I think, you know what, that they speak to the closed parts of ourselves. So I... I think that when we do this well, we will automatically, everyone will become more open because we'll actually have to open ourselves up as much as anything. So to me, there's a very beautiful um, vision of business arising out of this conversation, actually, which is a business that is way more responsible. I don't want to say accountable. It is accountable as well, but responsible is bigger than accountable is responsible in a way that's beautiful. It's actually responsible for creating beautiful outcomes in the world for many people, because that's what businesses have the capacity to do. Well, I think that that's a, a great way to end this particular podcast and, and address the, the question, the, which was, you know, really what you were saying at the start of the podcast was around saying, well, I come from a background of thinking a certain way and that way, if you only think that particular way, then you're going to miss all these other things that you should be responsible for in relation to running a responsible, as you say, organisation. And so, therefore, it's 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 opening that up to a, a bigger world, even beyond, you know, where we're currently at at the moment. So there's something bigger to, to really achieve. Yeah, really bigger and and more beautiful, and actually really worth moving towards because it makes it makes life better. So thanks again for the chat, sir. It's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to The Spirit of Business with Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. We'll be back next week with another episode. You'll find the show notes with links and other useful information on our website, spiritofbusiness.live. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends.